Okay, cool. What's what's the next line? It's nano time. Got it. It's nano time. Great. Can you do it dorkier? Okay. Yep, 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 yep. It's nano time. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Delayed Input, a program that, while I continue to blissfully yet strenuously plug through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, haven't finished it yet, has kind of just been slowly digivolving into a weekly look at what I've been googling lately. And this week, I would love to talk about the reveal of Marvel Rivals. There are some rumors coming into this week, for sure, but we didn't know a lot about this game coming in. So initially, I'm a little nervous seeing this very mobile game style 2D animation. You know what I'm talking about, where it's like, you know what I'm talking about? Where it's like somebody drew a thing and then they just kind of like smush it around. (laughs) But quickly it moves to gameplay and it looks like this. It looks kind of cool. It's a 6v6 hero shooter with what I would consider some unique takes on classic Marvel characters. NetEase is at the beginning of this trailer, but you might be wondering, who's making this? NetEase Games. No, who though? Who though? Who? A NetEase team composed of global talent who previously worked on hit franchises such as Call of Duty and Battlefield. You heard of those games before? NetEase is one of those large companies I hear of repeatedly but never really understood what their deal is. NetEase Games is a leading global developer and publisher of video game IP across a variety of genres and platforms. But looking through their whole lineup, which does include global IP, I'd say the only game that I was personally familiar with is Naraka. Probably my first exposure to any NetEase game, actually, was a trailer they had in 2022's Xbox Showcase. It's one of those trailers, it starts with join 10 million players. A lot of trailers do that. It's like, hey, this thing is pop. You may not have heard of us, but we are popular. You need to catch up. Something I do think is interesting in Naraka's case, though, is that it seems to be one of the very few NetEase Games games that is made by a separate, distinct, named studio. In this case, 24 Entertainment, who you might know from their work on Naraka Blade Point and Naraka Blade Point Mobile. And then otherwise, I guess, in in the case of Marvel Rivals, NetEase is just NetEase. Like, NetEase to me is like, it's like scrolling through catalogs and seeing nice websites for mobile games that never want to show you what they actually look like. NetEase is always telling me to customize my look for the special one. NetEase is always like, make MMO great again. You'll be looking at NetEase games and you'll find the craziest asymmetrical multiplayer Tom and Jerry game you could ever imagine. You're asking me, does NetEase have their own Fall Guys? Yeah. It's called Eggy Party. It's also their own Among Us. Incidentally, you might scroll down and read the YouTube comments. And they say, your new update is so cute. There's a lot of things to do now. It's really very funny. I like Eggy Party. Eggy Party Games be like. Obviously, there are a lot of real human fans of Eggy Party. Now, NetEase has actually already published two Marvel games. In 2019, they launched Marvel Super War, a MOBA which boasts fair and balanced combat. And in 2020, they launched Marvel Duel, which is a trading card game with exciting 3D multiplayer combat. Are these games good? I couldn't tell you. They are explicitly not global releases. What's kind of crazy is I think the art for this stuff looks nice. It's not flawed. You know what I mean? It's it's like it's not it's not flawed, but I do think it is interesting to look at those two projects and then Marvel Rivals. And I actually think this art kind of pops. I think Marvel Rivals has a nice look, but I don't think it's going to be that game. Like when Iron Man says it's Nano time. It's nano time. And then it blows up that whole statue. I think that's impressive for what this game is. But I guess what I'm feeling like, because my actual first thought after watching the trailer the first time was who pushed for it? Who wanted this more? Did Marvel want to make a 6v6 shooter and the only partner they could think of was NetEase? Or did NetEase want to make a 6v6 shooter 
And the only partner they could think of is Marvel? I think a good clue for us is here in the press release. This partnership with Marvel Games continues our commitment to build world-class development teams and reach global audiences with cutting-edge experiences. And so maybe I get the impression that Marvel Rivals is not an Overwatch-scaled project, that maybe it is more of a developmental stepping stone for NetEase, who gets this experience of making a game like this and gets this reputation for making a game like this. Oh, NetEase is AAA now. They made that Marvel game. And maybe, 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 it's possible. Maybe there is a chance that at the end of all this, they do make some money from this project. And on Marvel's end, we know the way they configure these deals. They are definitely going to make money. Something I think about a lot as I enjoy the things I enjoy is the growth of IP, right? How an idea that just some person has becomes a multi-billion dollar enterprise and how it takes years and it takes reiteration. Sometimes, I don't, sometimes like you can just make a big thing and hit it in one shot. Sometimes you get like a ghost of Tsushima and Sony's like, okay, time for a movie. Let's make the movie off of one game. What I think is interesting about Marvel IP is that while like, yes, people are sick of it. It's tired. It's played out. It's Disney. They had to work so hard to get to this point of overexposure. Like it took decades. It took, okay, creative brilliance and then decades of reiteration. What I think about is like Spider-Man, right? By the time Spider-Man had his first movie, there were hundreds of comics, most of them bad, right? There were some TV shows. And so they just, they had an idea by the time they're making this movie, what works about Spider-Man? What's good about him? What's bad? what not to make him do, but also like, what's, what's great about this character? What's, what's great about J Jonah Jameson? How essential is he? He's got to be in this movie. Imagine Marvel studios for some reason announcing a new movie named after an original character. They just came up with this may Marvel studios. Leggy. Beggy. Eggy party games be like, that would be insane. Why would you? It's untested. It's untested. A frequent problem that game executives are finding with AAA video games is that they're so damn expensive to make that it only makes sense to publish games based off of established IP. However, as time goes on, we're running out of established IP to ruin. And so what, what you have to do for somehow is grow IP within the existing IP. So one of the playable characters they're advertising in Marvel Rivals is one I had never heard of, Luna Snow. And it turns out Luna Snow was originally created as a character for Marvel Future Fight, another dumb Marvel mobile game. After that, she appeared in a tie-in comic for a big multiversal event, and then other comics, and she's just canon now. She's a, a Marvel character. Important fact from her Wikipedia article. In January 2023, her singles Tonight and Flow featuring Luna Snow Space Remix reached respectively more than 86,000 and 41,000 views on YouTube. Look, as someone who regularly does well beneath those numbers, I don't know if they're notable enough to bring up on the Wikipedia article. But anyway, even if Marvel Rivals was funded cynically just to make money for two large corporations that already have a lot of money, I do still appreciate that there are people who will like this. Look, I don't, I'm never going to play this game. No way in hell. But I think it's interesting to look at. I think it's an interesting project. It doesn't mean much for the brand of the Hulk, but it's cool to at least observe the rise of Luna Snow. Bear witness to the growing legacy of Spider Cat. And that's delayed input for this week. Thanks for watching. So two weeks ago, I did a whole video about Embracer selling Saber Interactive to itself. And at the time, rumors and suggestions said that Gearbox would be the next to go. Well, 
March 28th, Embracer Group divests Gearbox Entertainment for a consideration of 460 million US dollars to take to Interactive Software, Inc. And then kind of tying into everything we're talking about this week, a lot of what Embracer talks about and Take Two talks about is more the IP that's moving around than the humans. Firstly, if you were wondering, yes, they did do another PowerPoint presentation, and sadly, no, there wasn't a map on the Q&A slide. But here's how they break it down. Here's what we're keeping. Here's what we're getting rid of. Remnant Franchise, Hyperlight Breaker, publishing rights. Cryptic uh, makes Neverwinter Online and Star Trek Online. Lost Boys, I was not familiar with. And I'm here wondering, like, what's their IP? What do they make? Well, they're a support studio, and yes, it is a Peter Pan reference, and they seem very proud about it. Captured Dimensions, what's their IP? Captured Dimensions apparently is a 3D scanning company, and I actually think this stuff is really cool. So Embracer basically came out this week and said, phew, with those employees gone, maybe now, maybe, maybe we can start making some money. Take two in their own press release says this. Take-Two will acquire Gearbox's extensive portfolio of intellectual property, including full ownership of the critically and commercially acclaimed Borderlands and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands franchises. Commercially acclaimed is not a phrase, but this is kind of the juicy part right here. Gearbox currently has six key interactive entertainment projects, video games, in various stages of development including five sequels, two of which are from the Borderlands and Homeworld franchises. Now, Homeworld 3 is happening, and at least one exciting new intellectual property. Now, if you were following along with however they were stating that, if there are six new games and five of them are sequels, yeah, at least one should be a new intellectual property. But look at those franchises. Homeworld, Risk of Rain, Brothers in Arms, and Duke Nukem. Like, what? How is Duke Nukem even on that list? How is Duke Nukem even mentioned as being a part of any $460 million deal? It just, to me, that indicates, like, how IP-starved this world is. Where, like, even Duke, Duke Nukem... Take two? You're gonna make a Duke Nukem sequel? It's like, it's like, at this point, it's just like any, any name, any name, any two words, any blonde guy with sunglasses that a 40 year old video game buyer would recognize is more valuable than gold somehow. Eggy party games be like.